everyone. Hi, folks. What cute people we have in our class. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I see Amy. I see the Richardsons. I see Tara. Hey, Kyron. Hey, Fugits. Hey, Lou and Peter. Hello, my friends. It's so good to see everyone. Welcome back to our second family painting night. I am, I'm joining you from my home, and I thought it was appropriate because I have a kitty cat here with me. <laughs> and since we're painting a kitty cat, this is my cat, Dolly. <laughs> I'm glad y'all are here. Um, Miss, uh, Miss Melissa, if you want to, you can put it in gallery view and you should be able to see everybody. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you. the hang of it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, for, Melissa, for, for teaching us. I'll shut up and you can take it away. <laughs> oh, boy. did we have fun last week? Did everybody have a good time? I hope so. Awesome. Okay, so tonight, um, I'm going to switch it back to just the one, but we, uh, we're going to do this little cat in the moonlight painting, and it's, it's a very simple, um, and, but it's something that I tried out with my high school students in the beginning because because of COVID, many of my students have never got to paint. Um, so even though they're in high school, they may not have gotten to paint and let alone do watercolor. So I, I found this little painting um, and I'm gonna show you the finished one that I found that we are kind of looking off of. So I think I can just do this. Yeah, can you guys, are you seeing the Pinterest thing? No, you're not, are you? Okay. Uh, try this no 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 never mind I'm not gonna be able to show you that one but that's okay I'll show you what my students get so and the wonderful thing about art is that it's so you and so self-expressive and that and we're not worried about if it's if it's right or if it's perfect because the imperfections are what makes it wonderful and that and and what makes it yours and so we in, encourage like you don't if you there's no such thing as mistakes in my class we call them as bob ross would say happy accidents because sometimes that makes your painting even better so these are high school kids here's i think you can see them with my phone and okay this one and i love how they did um I want the blue and purple in the sky. Okay. I'm trying to figure out which way I go angle wise so you can see it. There you go. And then there's this one. Now these are a little bit larger than the paper you have. So they're going to look a little bigger. This one has a nice pink and purpley sky. And this one has blue and pink and lots of colors and a, and a kind of a purple halo around the kitty cat. So it's all about having fun. And we're going to use some of the stuff we learned last week in this one, okay? So remember how we said that the paint will only go where the water goes. So we're going to start by pre-painting. But did you guys get your kitty cat drawn? Do you have your drawing like this now? Has everybody kind of got that sketched out on your paper? If you don't, I need mean, let me know and we'll sketch it together and I will help you through. I'm going to go to gallery so I can see. Has everybody got it drawn out? We, did you have any trouble with the tracing thing? Are we good? Thumbs up on that? No trouble? Okay. That's a trick I learned in college. And artists use it all the time. And like, if I want to do a sign with letters, I'll just print it out of the computer and trace it and do that transfer thing. And people think I'm really good at lettering, but it's just like tracing it. <laughs> so that's a trick you can use. Um, okay. So we're going to start with our sky. And we're going to start with the little stars. There's little dots in there that are stars. And I don't even know if I had the little dots on your uh, sketch. If I did not, let's put this down so you can see them. Just make some random little dots. And these are going to be stars. So you might want to take your pencil and just make some little polka dots wherever you want stars to be on your paper. It won't take just a second. And there's no wrong placement. You can put them as many or as few as you want. And you can make them big or skinny, it's whatever, whatever you feel like on your sky. This is kind of a Halloween painting. So we're kind of, if you notice, I've got a little fall gnome in there and I've got a, some, some pumpkins and we're just trying to kind of keep it seasonal here. Uh, things I like to paint, I love to paint pumpkins. So maybe we can do pumpkins next week because they're fun. 
um, and the animals. So I kind of put a little bit of everything in there. So once we've got all our little circles, wherever you want stars, those are going to be yellow, okay? Now, here is a trick that you can do if you have crayons. And I think I mentioned it last week when we did our examples of the little, you know, the little samples of watercolor. If you have crayons, you could actually color your stars with a yellow crayon or an orange or a white crayon and the watercolor won't cover it. Um, and that's one fun way to make it. But if we're just gonna do paint, we're gonna pick our pointy, pick one of our brushes that's got a pointy tip and it's kind of small, kind of skinny like this one, okay? It's, it's a skinnier, it's not the smallest, but it's kind of small and it's got a pointy tip. And that's the one I would recommend. And we're just going to wet our brush. And did you guys bring two cups of water today? Like the, we were suggesting last time? I did. And it, honestly, I didn't do it before this class. And I learned that when I was watching some videos for this class. And um, it's actually really helpful. So you're going to wet your brush a little bit. And then we're going to dip it into this color um, yellow on your palette. It's almost like a mustardy yellow. Or you can do the super bright yellow, whichever one you want. And just paint your polka dots that you made, your little stars. Just dot them in. If you go out of the lines, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You just fill them in with yellow or orange. Or even white if you want your stars to be white. I'm doing kind of the orangey yellow for mine. I love that my students that did this, no two paintings were alike. And that's the wonderful thing about art, it's so expensive. And we're gonna wait just a second and let those dry a bit. In, in um, sometimes if you're doing a painting that's got a lot of different layers on it, if you have a blow dryer handy, you can blow it dry real quick and not have to wait for the, the paper to dry in between. But we're just going to wait a second because, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of paint or a whole lot of water on these, so they should be fine. Well, on this one, this one, and I didn't paint. Okay, so our next step is we're going to switch brushes, okay? And we're going to pick up a flat brush but not the biggest one, but the next to the biggest one, okay? It's got a kind of a rounded tip, actually. It's not really perfectly flat, but that's, we're gonna use a big area of water, so we're gonna use a bigger brush to spread it around. Now we're gonna paint around our little stars with water, so you're gonna get your clean water, okay? And we're just gonna paint around the stars and just kind of wet the paper and kind of careful not to paint over our little stars we made. So we're just going to kind of paint around them. And you want to put, be kind of generous with the water because it's going to take a minute to get it all on there. So we're going to put some water on there and kind of spread it around. And you don't get it in the moon. We're painting just the sky. So don't paint on your circle. Kind of paint around your circle. And paint around your little stars we made. Now, if any of you guys brought salt tonight, I'm just gonna do a really cool salt trick with this. I didn't tell you to have salt, but if you do, awesome. Or if you wanna grab some, awesome. Cause we can throw salt into the sky and get some special effects going on there. It'll look really cool. So I'm just making sure I get really close to my little circles that I've already painted without painting over them. But I'm just getting the water right up next to them. Cause remember the paint's gonna go just where the water is and nowhere else. So we want to make sure we paint up to, see I got a little bit in there and smeared it, but guess what? It's okay. So I'm going to paint around these guys. A little bit. I hope everybody had a good week. Oh, and I smeared it again, but you know what? It's okay. Paint around your moon. And paint up to the fence down here. You don't paint on the fence yet. Just paint down to it. Lots of water, not too wet because you don't want your paint paper to like curl up. And remember though, our little trick I talked about last week, I don't know if you guys remember or not, 
if you have like a, a drawing board with just a board or, um, or you could use your table and use like painter's tape or artist tape or masking tape even and tape down your paper, um, then it won't curl up at all. But as long as it's on this pad, um, like I think we're fine. I think paper's good enough. It's not going to curl too bad. Okay, so I think I've got my sky pretty much painted with water. Okay, so now this is where you get to have fun. I'm going to mix, I'm going to use some purples and I may even do some blues. And if you want to throw some pink in your sky. So while it's wet, dip your brush back in the water and get it nice and wet again and pick up whatever color you want to start putting in there in that sky. So I'm going to start off with some purple. You guys see my purple? And I'm going to paint around just like we did with the water, kind of letting the purple do its thing. Okay, I'm going up. And you may have to wet your brush a little bit more occasionally because our paper may be drying a little bit. We'll make a little kind of halo around those stars. So it's very light color purple. So we're gonna, we're gonna add more to it. I got a lot more paint on my brush that time. And do you remember the wet on wet thing? How we just let the paint do what it wants? And it just goes. The bleed, it's called a bleed. You can do that some, for some pretty effects. Just kind of wet your paint. Lay it on there, and it's not going to get on your stars because we painted around them with the water. Okay. Now, while this is wet, I'm going to finish out my purple on this side. But then, while this while this purple is wet, if you want to bring some of the blue in there, that's the time to do it. Okay. Simple. Filling it in with that purple. Careful around our little stars. Okay. Now, I'm going to put some blue with mine too. Let me finish doing my purple. Paint it around the moon. My edge is really good. So now I'm going to wash my brush, wash the purple out, and now I'm going to put some of that blue. I think you guys have the same blue. It's kind of a bright blue, but it's pretty. So we can do the wet technique and just kind of bring some blues into that purple. If you want, you can put black in there, make your sky even darker. So we might do a little black too. I'm just kind of patting it on there and letting it blob. If you want to spread that around more, can so it travels around the, in the purple a little bit better. And you, you can bring pink into this. You can bring whatever your heart desires. And we'll put some blue on the other side so it all kind of matches up. And I need to wet my brush a little bit more. I'm just going to spread that blue around. Like I said, if you want yours just to be all purple and you can make your purple darker by adding more and more purple. I'm just kind of pat, spread that blue around. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. And mainly, like I was talking about last week, it's pushing puddles. Like that's watercolor. You're just pushing puddles of color around where you want them. So we're pushing these little puddles of blue. Okay. I made a total mess around my stars, but that's okay. <laughs> bring my blue over here a little bit more. And if you want black and you can make it a really dark sky, a very spooky sky, you can put some black in there. I'm just kind of even it up around my sky, around my moon. Okay, here's where we can have some fun. While this is wet, if you have some salt, or want to run and get a pinch of salt. Um, and we're just going to sprinkle it in our purple sky. 
and you gotta leave it on there. And when it dries, like when we're all done, we'll we'll kind of flake off the salt grains and it'll leave that really cool special effect on there. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just kind of fun if you want to see what it does to your to your sky. It'll make it look more like a sky. I really did poorly painting around my stars. So I'm gonna get one, but go back to my small brush and get a little more purple. And I'm gonna come and fix my stars a little bit. Spread the purple out. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is just me trying to fix my gaps here. If they could look like little halos too, which would be okay. It's so forgiving, like watercolor is just soothing. I think it is. I hope you all think it is. So see how the salt is kind of, it kind of soaks up the paint. And when it dries, it leaves little spots that are kind of lighter where it soaks it up. And uh, it makes it kind of look like stars or it's a good way to use it to make like sand or a beach or foliage in the background if you're doing like a, a landscape. And these little pockets of purple here. Even though I've got salt, I can still add this on there. Yeah, I could still spread it around, salt and all, doesn't matter. And if you got places that are darker and places that are lighter, that's probably pretty realistic. Very often the night sky is not this solid black, is it? Or solid purple. Okay. I love purple and orange together. It's a strange combination, but I think Halloween colors are so cute. And especially if you throw a little lime green in there. Love it. I decorated a wedding with her reception one time and the bride had purple and orange as her colors and it was in October. So we had pumpkins everywhere and it's just so pretty. Okay. So I'm kind of done and I'm going to let this dry and rest for just a second. And while I do that, I'm going to switch my view so I can see your guys. Can you see what you got? Mm -hmm. Melissa, you were talking about happy accidents and I think I accidentally yeah. created shooting stars. <laughs> oh, that's, a little, that's even I, more fun. I, I used, um, when we were painting the stars, I think I used a little too much water and I shook it to dry it and it kind of smeared dripped. a couple of the stars. So that makes it even more fun. And I've never thought about making them shooting stars. See, if you've never watched Bob Ross, I think you all probably all know who he is, right? Pretty much. He was a sweet man who had a painting show on KET and he was so soft-spoken and he talked about happy trees and your happy little world that you create. And, and if you, you could never mess it up. Now, you guys, if I go too fast, let me know, okay? Because I'm bad for that. So I'm going to give you a little time for everybody to get up to speed on their, on their uh, sky. Ford family, I love your water cup. Those are cool. Those are cool, yeah. They're not, they're spill proof. <laughs> okay. So while our sky is drying, I got salt everywhere. I'm gonna wipe the extra salt off my parts we haven't painted yet. Okay, so now we're gonna do our moon, okay? And it kind of the same way, we're gonna wet it first and then we're gonna bring in orange and yellow uh, into the moon. So in either brush you wanna use on this, it doesn't have to be a big fat brush, but typically if you're going to do a pretty big area, it's just easier. But where we gotta paint around the cat, 
So we may want to switch and go back to a pointy brush around him and then do the fat brush for the just the wider areas. So we're just painting the water around the outline of the kitty cat because we don't want to paint him yellow. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can see. I want to fix just kind of outline him with water. My cat's fat. I made a fat cat. He used to have a very fat cat and his name was Mervid. He was a Siamese cat and he was so mean that my friends would call and say, lock up your cat, we're coming to visit. And we'd have to put him up because he was, he was so mean. Mean old Mervid. He lived to be 21 years old. Okay, so I'm painting around my cat kind of carefully, and now I can go for a little bit bigger brush and, and put some water on the rest of the moon, okay? If we get a hold of some purple, it's gonna bleed into that a little bit, but that's okay. It's bleeding a little bit in there. Oops. I'm bleeding a lot, right? You know what? That's okay. It's better though if we could wait completely dry with the the sky first. But this is okay. And we can take a paper towel and kind of blot if it's bled in where the blue and purple kind of come in. We can kind of go back and blot that up gently. And notice I'm not rubbing; I'm patting. Like we made clouds last time with this. You can also use it kind of like an eraser. Kind of pat and pick up where you made a boo-boo. I'm going to try this again with a little water. I'm not getting so close to the edge. It's already wet anyway. Okay, now I'm sufficiently got water going. I'm going to start with my yellow. I'm going to use a bright yellow this time and just start painting in there and let it flow around in that water. And the only time we got to be super careful is around Mr. Kitty, but you know, he's going to be black. And he's going to cover it up if we get yellow on him anyway. Um, watercolor see-through. It's translucent. It lets light through. Um, so if you make a mistake, you can't really kind of paint over it. Um, that's why you have to make it, figure out how to make it work, which sometimes makes your art even better. Um, and if you were doing an acrylic painting and you make something like a mistake accidentally, then um, you can just paint over with watercolor, you got to be a little bit creative and see how we can make things work. I think that's why I love it, though. Okay, when we get to where we're putting the yellow around Mr. Kitty, I'm going to switch back to a smaller brush. Honestly, when I do a watercolor painting at home, I'll probably use a brush like this for the whole thing. Most of the time, I don't switch my brushes a whole lot unless I switch to a super teeny detail brush at the end. I'm just painting yellow around my cat. Now, where we're painting around the cat and where we've already painted, kind of blend it together, kind of take your brush and swirl those edges together because you don't want to have a big outline around your cat that shows because sometimes your brush strokes will leave, a, you know, will show up. So we want to kind of blur that where we've painted around Mr. Kitty and the paint already was. So I'm kind of swirling my brush, a little swirly mark. Now, your moon can have some orange in it and it could have some darker yellow in it or some white in it. And this is where we get to play a little bit. We kind of do like we did the sky, if you want. And put some orange. Isn't that a pretty orange? 
that was the lid on my paint tray. <laughs> okay, so I'm wetting, wetting, wetting this and letting the orange, I'm having my orange kind of, I need to spread it around a little bit more, I guess. Maybe around the edges more. I like the orange with the yellow. Doing those swirly little brush strokes again. I'm blending it together. That's the word for today. Swirly. And I kind of like where I've got pockets of like dark orange in the places. You know, the moon has all those craters and different colors on its surface. So it could be like this, right? Kind of orangey. A harvest moon is orange, right? Almost. So I'm not going to blend those in, I don't think. I'm liking how it looks, just little pockets of orange here and there. So I'm going to put a little bit more up top and just spread it around with swirly motion. See? But to the edge, the edge you don't want to swirl. When we're all done, then your sky would probably be dry or close to it. And then when it, when it gets completely dry, you just take your fingers and kind of flick the salt off there. It kind of makes a mess um, on your table tops or whatever, but you can take a little paper towel and kind of rub them off. But you can see, I'll move some of these around on mine with my finger. It's still too wet to do much. You can't really tell the effects yet, but we will when it dries. I love it. I love, love, love this. I hope that everyone is showing their artwork off and displaying it in your house. Are you hanging it up to show it off? Richardson family, you got lots of art stuff. I love it. Cool. You can kind of see my classroom. It's, it's a mess, but we have art everywhere. <laughs> So I'm kind of being quiet and just giving you a minute or two. Like we're taking our time on the on the moon and the sky. And if you want to put salt on your on your moon, you can do that if you want. It might be cool. And I'm gonna try this experiment at home. I haven't tried this yet, but I wonder if sugar would do the same thing. I have no idea, but I, I might try that. I feel like it might. Now, we have done this in the past, and I had different sizes of salt, and I had kosher salt, and I had rock salt, and I had margarita salt, because it's all different, different sizes of crystals of salt, and so the different sizes of, of salt do make different effects on the paper. Mm -hmm. Sarah Kate's kitty's watching over us today. He's our spokesmodel. Or she, is it a she or he? Her name is Dolly Purton. <laughs> Mrs. Kitty, I would say Mr. Kitty. Our, our paper's <laughs> Mr. Kitty. I had a cat. Um, we thought it was a girl cat. And we named her Amy, and Amy turned out to be Amos. <laughs> so then we just called him Mr. Kitty after that, you know. He was a big old white cat. He was so pretty. Well, 
But I like that your cat turned out to be Amos because my name's Amy, but I was actually named after my great grandfather, Amos. So. <laughs> oh, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's cool. You have a connection. Um, yeah. My husband came up with a, well, it's going to be Amos instead of Amy. So, what well, it was a cool cat name. Amos is a very cool name. We're dog people, mostly. I have two boxers and a chihuahua pug mix at the house. I might have to bring a little Russell. That's my little pug mix and let you guys see him one night. <laughs> he doesn't like to travel. I think we should have a pet show and tell sometime. <laughs> Great. Maybe we could paint a portrait of, everybody could paint a portrait of their pet. Ooh, it's like, like a homework assignment. Has anyone painted this week on your own just for fun and just played around with it? Has anybody done that? Just seeing what you could do. Awesome. There's lots of good tutorials out there too on YouTube. Um, I use them in class. I'll do a demonstration myself a lot, of, most of the time, but sometimes I'll do that in addition to a video. You did that this week? That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I love it. Yay. What? How long stuff like you have. It's amazing. That was yeah. great. You're a pumpkin pro. <laughs> yeah. I love that you showed it to me too. I thank you for that. That's made me very happy. Drake wants to show you what he worked on this week. Oh, I would love to see it. Oh, is it a leaf? That's beautiful. And you did some splatters. Yep. Amazing. He tried several different techniques. <laughs> that is wonderful. Wonderful. Mute that back, Jay. Mute that back, buddy. Is everybody doing okay with this? Does anybody have a have a question or have a struggle or need need advice on anything? We're doing pretty good. Okay. If you're shy, you can also type your question in the chat. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Most of my students, you know, you wouldn't believe this, like. I'd have, you know, a dozen kids on, um, we do Google Meet for online classes, and they would never speak to me. They wouldn't, they wouldn't show their picture. They'd have a little icon, and, and they wouldn't speak to me. They would chat, but they would type stuff, but no one would unmute and talk to me. I'm going to put the chat thing where I can see it. And you guys can type in there if you would rather type. It's fine with me, whatever you want to do. I think... Because our moon is wet and because our sky is wet, then we're going to skip Mr. Kitty for a minute and go down and work on our fence. And the fence is a little tricky because if you look on your paint palette, you probably don't have gray, right? And our fence is supposed to be like an old weathered, uh, weathered fence. So with watercolor, really and truly, you don't add white to something to make it lighter because you can white and black together make gray. But true watercolor is uh, just use the white of the paper. So less paint equals a lighter color. Like if you're trying to make make a pink, you may only use like really, really light red and let the water white of the paper be the white. Um, that's just a, a traditional thing. Um, so, but if we need to add some white to our black, to make it a better gray in spots, we can do that. That's totally okay. But we're going to try just doing it by, by light layers of, of black, okay? Now, it's a little tricky to paint the straight line, okay? Um, and I totally get that. I want to show you. I'm going to try to put this where you can see the fence part of my painting a little bit. There's a trick called pulling a line, okay? And we'll do this at the end. Like we're going to put a light wash of gray in there and then let it dry for a minute. And then we're going to go over it and draw the lines with our brush and kind of make the wood grain look 
with our brush. So the first thing we want to do, and I'm just going to use my pointy brush for this, but maybe a bigger one. Uh, I'll just use the one I had. All right, so I'm just going to lightly kind of water down some black and start filling it in. And it's going to look really, really dark at first. Can you see that? So what happens with watercolor, we, if, we get, if we put it down and it's way too dark, we're just going to take that and we're going to move that puddle. Okay, we're going to add some water to it and kind of spread it around. In the shape that we need and see it looks great but that's actually just black that we just use very little paint and and a little more water and so once again i put some paint on my brush and if it looks too black we can dip our brush back in the water and kind of spread that around and that's one way that's going to make it look like an old weathered fence like kind of like barn wood you know having the different shades of gray in there so some dark places and some light places. I got what too dark. And see how I'm holding my brush? I'm kind of doing like this. That'll help you get a straight edge. You kind of rock your brush back and forth. It'll help you get a straight edge. All the way off the paper. Yeah, I didn't draw it all the way off the edge there, but. Okay, and then we'll go over to the next one and do the same kind of thing. We're going to do this all the way across. And I got really, really black. Oops. So let's take that black and kind of use it. Spread it around. And we always want to stay a little bit maybe lighter than we need to because you can always make it darker. You can always go back and add another layer of paint and darken it up, but it's really difficult sometimes to lighten something in watercolor. Like about the only way you can lighten something up is to take clean water on your brush and put it on there and take your paper towel and dab, kind of like I did on the moon up there. So um it's always best to stay a little lighter than you need. And you can go back and darken it later. And add more, more paint in. And you kind of want your fence post. I'm kind of putting the darkness right against the edge. You kind of want to do that. Kinda have the edges be a little bit darker than the middles. Just to help us. And separate one fence post from another. And I made my fence post kind of fat on this paper. But that's okay. Yours may be skinnier than mine. Okay, so is everybody getting that? That one looks really dark on camera, but it's not really that dark here. So we do every fence post like that. I'm going to start off with kind of dark black. And then I'm just going to spread that paint around, leaving it a little bit dark at the edge. And as we go across through there, the first ones we're doing are drying, which is a good thing. And so what we're going to do, our steps will be this. We are going to paint in the fence like we're doing. And then we're going to jump up and paint Mr. Kitty. And then by that time, our fences will be dry and we can come back and kind of make some little wood grain marks and nail marks on there. So remember to paint around Mr. Kitty on this post that he's sitting on. He's gonna be black. He's a black cat. So we're gonna keep it kind of light around him so he shows up good. 
because this post is not going to be super dark. Except right under his tail, we're going to make a little shadow in the shape of his tail. Just paint me out of the green skin. Yeah. I'm painting at a weird angle because of this document camera thing. So it's a weird. And if you get too dark in one spot, you can see it kind of push that away, push it around. If your paint gets streaky, remember the dry brush thing I showed you the other day? If your paint gets streaky and kind of drags little bits of paint, that means you probably need to wet your brush a little. I'm not using a whole lot of paint. I'm just putting kind of a little blob down and then wetting my brush and spreading that blob around so that our fence looks gray. It's wild how much darker it looks on camera than it is me looking at it. This looks super dark right here, but it's not really. Yeah, I just dumped a little black on there and now I'm spreading it. And see, I'm not adding more paint. I'm just wetting my brush more than using the paint I already have on there to move it around. We're almost done with fences. I'm almost all the way across. Well, I got a lot of paint right there. Wet my brush and just push this around. If it blurs a little bit, that's okay. They call that being loose. If you're painting and you're you know, being free with it and having fun with it, it's called being loose or being painterly. I always like that term, painterly. That your painting looks like a painting. It doesn't have to look like a photograph of something. It is what it is. It's a painting. Oh, that looks really dark. You know what I might do? I'm going to blot that guy because he is really dark. I'm going to lift some of that paint off there and try that again. That was pretty easy. Did you see how I did that? And that looks too light. Oops. Let's spread some of that out. Okay. Now we gotta let this dry for just a second before we oh you have two shades of gray in yours. Awesome. Mine has, has black and white. So I think we a couple of us got a different palette. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't see that, Rachel, so just I mean, just now. Um but uh, let this dry for just a second because we don't want to put our arms in it when we're painting the cat. We don't want to get our hand in the black fence, but and it needs to dry just a bit. Of, mine's almost dry, like the first ones I did are like almost dry. So just a second or two, and then we can paint the cat. And then the last steps will be to paint the wood grain on the fences. And we're just kind of kind of what they call drawing with your brush. Um, and then we can. And kind of check our salt. Mine's still wet. We may have to wait a couple of hours and rake off your salt. But we have that wonderful Facebook page now. 
And I would love it if everybody would post their painting pictures on there. That'd be great. Oh, yeah, it's got, it's got two layers in it. That's cool. That's cool. These are great palettes. Um, I use pretty much anything I can find, but my favorite kind of all, I only have one hanging out here. Let's see if I can find, yeah, I see one laying out. Just a second, I'll grab one and show you guys what it's one of my favorite palettes. Crayola makes a uh, watercolor that's pretty good too. And uh, Sorry, I walked off set for a minute. This is my favorite. Um, and this is by a company named Prang. And I use that one a lot. Um, let me see the colors that's in it. And, and this, I love that the, the ones we have, I think we all have a pink in there. And pink is hard to find in watercolors. Um, so I'm tickled to death that we have pink in there. All right, so let's, let's now we're going to take our teensiest pointy brush because we're going to paint our cat. We're going to take a very small pointy brush, not necessarily the teensiest, but pretty small. I like this guy. He's pretty small. We're going to paint our cat and we're going to paint it black, black. Like we're not going to water it down. Um, this one, we're going to put it pretty solid black. Pretty saturated black. Let me move my palette a little bit so you can see the cat. And be careful about putting your hand in there, but you know, I have to touch my hand to the paper for some reason. I just have to paint like that. I always end up with paint on my arm, my hand. When I'm doing a pencil drawing, I have pencil wet all over my hand. I get into my work. And when you're doing a painting where you want it really saturated with color or with paint, I'm, I wish you could see this. I don't know if you can. I'm gonna hold my paint and I'll phone up. I am kind of swirling. I don't think you see this. Swirling my paint around on my brush and getting it kind of liquid soapy consistency. That's always a good analogy, I think. So now I'm painting in. Okay, see this where it's, this effect right here. That means I need water on my brush because we're getting a dry brush and we didn't mean to. So I didn't have enough water. Now I can come back with just some water and spread that paint where we want it to go. The liquid watercolors that come in tubes, um, they're pretty cool because you can really get some strong color out of those. But I mean, these little palettes, these little flat cakes of paint will last forever. They're wonderful. For the joy that you'll get out of painting, and I gotta put my hand in the salt. Um, it's a very uh, good investment for a few art supplies. It's gonna last a long, long time. Now there's some new brushes I have not tried that you put water in the brush body. It's like it's like a little bottle almost with the brush tip. 
I want to get some of those and play with them because I never have. But some of my students have, and they said that they're really, really cool. So your brush is always kind of loaded up with water. I made the cat have a very long tail. I think we need to name the cat. Where are you going to name your cat? Mine is, of course, going to be Amos. My mom was a cat lady. She loved cats and lots of cats. And she had some black kittens one time. She had three black kittens and she named them Ping, Pong, and Pug. <laughs> All right, my kiddos. We're running short on time, so I'm going to jump ahead and show you how to make the wood grain on your fences, okay? So I'm going back to the black, getting a little bit on my brush, and on the, I'm using the pointy, skinny pointy brush. And careful not to get your hand in your, your painting or for the kitty cat. And I'm just going to make some little wiggly lines up and down with the tip of my brush. I don't know if you can see that. Just wiggly lines. That's all you got to do. And they don't need to be real, real black. They can just be a darker than what you got there. But the wonderful thing about watercolor is so you layer it. So every little bit I put on here is going to darken gradually because we're building up layers. So I got a little fat there. Didn't mean to, but that's okay. To make a skinny line, you, you do what's called pulling a line. And I, I always have my hand kind of firm. And it's almost like you're holding a chopstick in your hand. And I keep my hand steady and just pull my fingers holding the brush. And I go real fast. And it makes a pretty straight line if you do that. But it barely lets that tip of that brush touch. And that'll make you a nice skinny, skinny line. So we could randomly have these. Well, it's, I got a little too dark there. So what I'm going to do is wet it back down and smooth them out a little bit. Spread them around. There we go. Easy fix. And not every board will have a whole lot of lines showing. There's some of them will and some of them may not. It gets a little wiggly, that's fine, because it's supposed to look like old wood. And then you might want to come in and make some areas darker. Okay. I don't have Mr. Kitty, so I've got to be a little bit careful here. And I got too much. Paint on my brush. Maybe if I did. Be careful. You know what I'm doing. Oops. So now he's going to have a shadow <laughs> under his tail. That's all right. We'll make it on purpose there. A little dark area that's shaped like his tail that could be a shadow of him. This is the fun part. Okay, so you're going to go all the way across, uh, continue making your wood grains till you get them however you want them. And then in the picture, it's got a couple little, they got little nails, and that's only going to be taking your black and your very, very skinny tip, skinny, weeny tip, and just making a polka dot here and a polka dot there and do that all the way across like on each and try to get them all in the same like place like level and you're gonna make your little nail holes all the way across your fence post i didn't finish my fence post yet because i wanted to go ahead and show you guys this 
and it's my little nail holes all the way across the top. And we have created our Halloween cat on a fence painting. Yeah, um, my salt is still wet. Is your guys' sky still wet? Will you check it? Kind of take your finger and we'll just test it. If it is, just leave it alone for a little bit. And then once it dries, you can flake the salt off there and then, and then post your picture on Facebook, okay? If you have Facebook, post it on the Facebook page so we can brag about you guys <laughs> and show off your wonderful artwork. So next week, can we do pumpkins? Does that sound fun? Yay, okay. Next week we'll do pumpkins. Awesome. And keep it up and keep painting on your own and practicing and, and exploring what you can do with paint. Love it. You are so, so cool, everybody. <laughs>